Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a cinch waist dress. And this came from Old Navy, and it's super cute. I start by marking my pattern out using a washable marker, and I'm just making a simple S-type pattern, kind of like a little meandering line. The overall feel that I want for this dress is to be sort of old school tie-dye, very bohemian, um, just not the perfect lines that we're all getting used to within tie-dye. I want this to have a funky feel to it, just a nice summer vibe. Now I'm securing it by using my tiny baby hair rubber bands. And I can tell you that my fingers started to hurt by the time I was done with this. I'm remembering now that I'm editing it because they were so tight along my fingers and there was so much material that I really had to like stretch them. Yeah, it wasn't fun. You could also use kite string or sinew if you wanted to create white lines, but I didn't. I just wanted this to have more of a scrunch feel. And when we get to the end, you'll see what I mean. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I am so happy to have you here. Make sure you click subscribe and set your bell to all. That way you do not miss out on any of my uploads. And for those of you that have been around since the beginning, thank you so much for sticking around. You know I couldn't do it without you. And I just want to remind you guys that I do have a Facebook group. It's called Belladonna Dyes Community Tie-Dye Group. And the link for it is down below in the description box. It's the first link right underneath the Etsy link. It'll take you right there. You just agree to the rules or whatever it's called and I will accept you in and then you can share your tie-dye and there are so many wonderful people in that group sharing their tips and tricks I highly recommend that you join and then also right underneath that is my business page and if you'd like to follow that I would also appreciate it This dress has that cinched waist, which is kind of like the dividing line. So I started with the bottom of the skirt part first. Now I'm working on the top part and I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the top that I did on the bottom. Just sort of like sloppy scrunch it, pleat it up and then secure it using the tiny baby hair rubber bands. And I do have links for the rubber bands down below in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie dye. So go ahead and check it out. And I know it sounds like I'm just shamelessly self-promoting the links. No, that's not why I say this in every single tutorial. It's because I want you guys to be able to find the links instead of feeling like you need to ask me where I got things. I want you to know that everything that I have that I use for tie-dye is listed in the description box down below. That looks pretty good, but this thing is really long. It's bigger than any gutter that I have or any rack that I have. So I decided just to sort of roll it in on itself, like kind of like a spiral, but it's not really a spiral, just to save on space. And I'm going to use rubber bands to hold it together. And then I'm going to create my setup. And for this one, I'm going to be doing a rack die. So I'm going to place it on top of a rack on one of these foil sheets from the dollar store and the foil pans leak you guys so you need to place it down inside of another tote before you send it off to batch i'm doing the die over ice method so when you're in the facebook groups and you see doi that's what it means die over ice and i'm going to keep it really simple on this one so I love to play in the dye colors and I did something on this one that I haven't done in a very long time and I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, but I'm excited to see. After the ice melted, I came back and I checked it and there was not much saturation on the back side. So I decided to do it one more time. So I'm just going to add a little bit of soda ash, a thin layer of ice, and then just a little more dye to try to push some of these uh, lighter colors through to the bottom.
I put the lid on the tote and just let the ice melt and I came back several hours later to check on it. Not all of the ice had melted, but it melted enough and it was time to flip it over. And this is where it gets really fun. So I decided to go totally crazy and go clear across the color wheel and pick some random dark colors. I love to play with the dye. I think you guys are picking up on that. And so this one is really fun. Once I have the dye on it the way that I want it, I give it a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and I'm going to put it away to batch for the full 48 hours. It's recommended that you let your project batch for 24 hours after the ice melts at 70 degrees or higher. So far, so good with this one. I wanted it to be light on one side and dark on the other. And by using less ice for each side, I think that I have achieved that with this one, but we'll know more once we open it up. So for the rinse out, you wanna start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up too hot. So the cold water removes the soda ash, the hot water removes the unbonded dye so it goes down the drain instead of the washing machine. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do hot water cycles using Kirilon. That is a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And that is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma. And yes, the links are down below in the description box. That way it's just easy for you to find what you need. And then I will dry it and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our cinched waist dress on Bella outdoors in 100 degree weather and she's looking super beautiful. I, on the other hand, melted trying to take this picture. 100 degrees in Oregon is unusual. I know a lot of you guys are suffering from a lot of heat and I'm sorry for that, but we're just not used to it here in the Pacific Northwest. So overall, I think this dress turned out amazing. I wanted it to be a two-tone dress and I have definitely achieved that. And I achieved it by using less ice. That way it wasn't being oversaturated. You know me, normally I don't wanna flip anything, so I just pack on the dye, pack on the ice, set it and forget it. For this one, it did take a little more work, but I think the overall outcome is so worth it. So what do you guys think of this dress? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing!